Yo, 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 what's going on, man? It's your boy Rick Taylor back with another episode of that Rick Taylor podcast. And I'm here with a special guest, man. Who am I here with? You are here with Maybe Shannon live and in color. That's <laughs> right. Y'all know y'all know what it is. Maybe Shannon, you know what I'm saying? We're gonna have a special night. Um, you know what I'm saying? It's gonna be a vibe. Um, I like to um think of all my episodes as vibe. You know okay, what I'm saying? Yeah. It's an episode, but it's a vibe, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So First and foremost, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you for coming. Yeah. And we like to pretty much let the fans know who you is and people know what you do and a background on your life and um, just chop it up and have a vibe, you know what I'm saying? Okay. So it's going to be nice, you know? Yeah. Um, now, with that being said, how are you doing? I've been good. Busy, but good. Like, what's that meme that's like, or like the quote that say like, I can't complain about having a full plate because I asked to eat. That's where I'm at in my life. So I'm busy, but I'm good. I'm pulled in many different directions, but I'm happy. Yeah, there you go, man. Um, I see you doing your thing. You know what I'm saying? Um, This is going to be a question for later, but, you know, I see you be back and forth um, in Las Vegas and stuff like that. What's that life in Las Vegas like? So I've been there for a few months, and I'm back and forth a lot. Mm -hmm. So it's like I feel like I haven't gotten a chance to really, like, even like come to the realization like I really live here now like I have an apartment out in Henderson that's like the suburbs so it's like 20 minutes from like the actual strip which is super nice and for me like I really really like wanted like the duality of having both like people like Arizona because it's quiet and this and this and that and like they like the mountains and stuff but Vegas is next door to Arizona like it's not far so living in Henderson where it's quiet it kind of gives me that peace like it's super peaceful it's super quiet like I don't talk to my neighbors they don't talk to me they doing their (laughs) own thing look the dogs got a little water fountain like it's super peaceful quiet and it's like a blend of people like that's yeah. something that you know being from wisconsin we don't get that where you in the suburbs and you see all types of people like normally if you move to the suburbs in wisconsin yeah. you're gonna feel out of place like that's a fact you know what i'm saying that's so like fact. i like that and then on any given day like if i want to turn up if i want to go out it's always something right. on the strip like so. now what made you um go i don't know if you answered that what made you go <laughs> down there like you know coming from milwaukee like you know. okay so like I think like everybody in Milwaukee was moving to Texas and Arizona yeah, and yeah. that's some or in Atlanta. Yeah. And I was just like, nah. You know what I'm saying? Like I like to do different things. Like I like to experience my own shit. Like and I've been to Vegas a few times. Originally I did want to go to Cali and I was like, Ooh, I would love to live here. But <laughs> I'm not paying three thousand for a one bedroom. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. I'm, like, I'm like, keep my little change, and you know what I'm saying. And Vegas is a lot cheaper, so like, I'm like, it's literally Vegas is between like Arizona and Cali. So like, if I ever want to catch a flight to Cali, like I can do that. Everybody, you know, you're right? It's nothing. So. Like, and that's crazy because you're right. A lot of people do move to Texas, Arizona, Man. Atlanta. Because I was even thinking like, if I leave, where would I go? You know, yeah, my girl, we were talking about Charlotte a lot. Okay. And um, I was like, I want to visit some other places just to yeah. see how it is. Kind of like, like that. Cap, form your own opinion because mm-hmm. like, I think everybody do certain stuff because everybody else is doing it. Right. And for me, like, I don't want to. If I'm leaving Milwaukee, I'm leaving to get the fuck out of Milwaukee. Like, not to be like that, but it's more so like. I'm going to go somewhere where everybody just up and went. That that don't make sense to me. So I wanted to just go and create mm-hmm. my own experience and meet new people. Like, I knew a few people there from Milwaukee. That's cool, too. Right. But it's not oversaturated yet, right. I feel like. And that's a fact. Now, let me ask you this. Um, hmm. Were you nervous when you first moved, like, left Milwaukee when you got to Vegas? Like, what was that like for you? So I was super nervous. Like, um, my family is super, like close in it like and I'm a little shelter like I ain't super shelter but I was a little like shelter so like I'm the baby of the family like most of like my immediate family still lives in Milwaukee like the people that you know you talk to every day the people you're around every day like they're still in Milwaukee like I got people out there but not my every day is there you know so it's super right. different right. especially coming from like home where like I call my dad like it's a spider can you come to my house and kill him and he'll pull up you know what I'm saying like I can't do that no more. Like, I call my dad, take my garbage out. Okay, I got you. Like, my mom, like, I feel like, mom, can you grocery shop for me? I got you. Like, yeah. I'm outside for real now. Look, <laughs> so it's definitely different. Right. Now, when yeah. you go, when you went there, like, was it hard adjusting to the life in Las Vegas from Milwaukee? Because I'm pretty sure it was a big difference. Like, yeah. was it hard meeting people and getting out there? Because you seem like a pretty outgoing person yeah. and, a, and a person that a lot of people, like, they come to you. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So when it comes to like adjusting, I feel like I'm still adjusting. I still feel very brand new because like I said, I'm back and forth a lot. Like I like 
I've been back every single month since I've been gone. So like, you know what I'm saying? For like a week or more at a time. So it still feels very brand new to me and I'm still adjusting. And it's definitely been a culture shock. Like I said, like the suburbs here is different from the suburbs there. And it's like when like even when I travel though, like people fail to realize like or even like people forget that Wisconsin is one of the most set. Well, Milwaukee is the most segregated city while Wisconsin like you can't even say to other places is segregated because it ain't no black people to segregate from. You know what right. I'm saying? Like it's all white. So it's yeah. like when you go somewhere else and you realize like this is a nice area and it's a blend of people like that's different when you go into like they rougher areas it's like well our rougher areas a little rougher than this area yeah, so this yeah. shit I can live here like what like so it's definitely a culture shock um, I think even like the dating scene going out and stuff like that I haven't dated there but I don't think I'm interested in dating in Vegas like from the stories I've heard no thank you mm. but um, going <laughs> out like it's definitely different cause I mean I'm like I'm outgoing I like to go different places but I'm protective of myself too so I like I like to feel people out first I like to see what they about when I meet people and they're like oh let's go out together okay let's you know let me see but it's different it's I, I can imagine it's different like it's Sin City you know what yeah. I'm saying like gambling it's the life of the party down there yeah. it's just like a lot of things is different like Vegas yeah. is much bigger much like different in Milwaukee you know yep. and it's a uh, congratulations to you too Thank by the way you. Thank for you. sure um, because it's hard to move from your hometown to go somewhere it and is. you move by yourself right I did yeah man congrats, <laughs> congrats to you because it's People really be hard like, what look I'm like yeah. yeah but my thing is if you don't do it if you wait for somebody else to do something you'll never get shit done yeah that's, and that's okay. Just how I feel about a lot of situations. That's a fact. But yeah, going out, I just be peeping the scene. It's it's definitely different. There, but there's always something to do, and no matter what you're into, it's there for you. So mm-hmm. that's the problem too. Like everything is at like your fingertips. Like whatever you want is there, and like I just feel like the club scene is a little different too. Just because like you really around like everybody like heavy hitters like people that's really doing a shit like millionaires billionaires are everywhere like everybody got ass titties in a new face like you know what I'm saying so it's yeah. like it make you want to step your game up you know what I'm saying and like it's fun to me like I've been having fun but I also know like you know Vegas is also known for like dancing and prostitution and stuff like that so I'm yeah. definitely like my eyes are open to that too where I'm like mm. Who, who's this guy? Why is he DMing me? Why are you trying to talk to me? Right. What's your intentions? Like, I'm heavier on that. Like, I be hard on... I be stiff on niggas anyways, but now out there, I'm really like... Yeah, what's the case? What you, exactly. you hit me up for? Mm-hmm. Stop playing with me. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure you get a lot of DMs a lot yeah. because you're a young, pretty girl, you know, pretty woman, excuse me, and you just outgoing your life at a party, so I just imagine how many DMs you get, you know what I'm saying? So um, <clears throat> we're going to get into that more often, too, um, more down the line. Now, to kick it off, also, um, you born and raised in Milwaukee? I was, yep. Okay. Now, yeah, born and raised. Now, where did you grow up in Milwaukee? Northside. Northside. I grew up by like Midtown. That okay. Area, yeah. Okay. Yep. <laughs> now, <laughs> people be like surprised at that too. Like, really? I'm like, yes. yeah. Yeah, Midtown ain't that bad. It's it, a lot of good areas around Midtown and stuff. Like I feel that. like what it used to be when I was little is different now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like when I was little, like people would be like, "That's the suburbs," and it's like Midtown. Like you know what I'm right. saying? But it was it was the nicer area, and like sadly, like that whole area, like. With Capital and Fond du Lac shooting through it, it's just mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. You know how it go with as time passes and stuff like that. Yeah. Now, what was your childhood like growing up um, over that area in Midtown and just Milwaukee? Period. So, my childhood. Hmm. Where are we gonna start? No, I'm just kidding. Go ahead, well, take your honestly, time. like. So my mom and dad, they're together. I come from a two-parent household. Household. <laughs> I would say house home, but yeah, <laughs> I come from a two-parent household, and like. They were together growing up, but I feel like in a sense, like I was sheltered coming up, like we couldn't spend a night over friends' houses and stuff like that. But that's due to like, you know, different traumas that happened with my mom because mm-hmm. like my sister actually was kidnapped when I was like really little. It was crazy. Wow. Yeah. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah. Like, so, you know, like that just like kind of made her raise her last two girls like really sheltered. Like we right. couldn't do sleepovers. They Nobody could sleep over our house. It was just like... You know, so I feel like being on the north side, like, I was in the house a lot. Or, like, not off my block. Like, my immediate block, like, I wasn't off of that much. So, I grew up in the house, minding my business, playing Barbie dolls. Right. <laughs> now, like, growing up and just, like, not being able to, like, you know, leave and being in the house a lot and seeing your sister hurting by her and kidnapping stuff. Yeah. 
What did that? How did that affect you? Just like, man, I can't leave the house. I gotta stay on the block. Then this happened to my sister. Yeah. And like, did you understand it from a like that perspective growing up from your mom's perspective? Yeah, I think so. I think so. And like, we had people visit and stuff. Like immediate family, like would spend the night and stuff like that. So we did have that still. Like, and my mom was the type of person like she took in like everybody. Like if like you ain't got your mom and daddy, or you need help. You need help. Your, that's the house that people would come to. You know what I'm saying? Like, the yeah. safe haven, like, so to speak, I guess. So, I don't know. Like, I think I just didn't realize, like, it was weird or different. Because people be like, wait, you ain't go to sleepovers? I'm like, no. What was yeah. that? Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> what people came and slept that? over our house. Like, immediate family. But my friends rarely ever, I think probably one time ever slept over. Like, it wasn't like that. And it's just, that was my normal. And, like, I feel like it didn't affect me much. Well, when I grew up, I just understood it more. Like, where I was like... My mama went through some shit. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Like, for man. your daughter to be kidnapped and that's gone. Deep. And it that's crazy to go through. So, yeah, I think, I, but <laughs> I feel like I still went to NPS. So, I went to that shelter. Like, right, right. if you went to NPS, Milwaukee Public Schools, like. You see everything. You're going to see some shit. I went to Tech, too. So, it was like. Yeah, I went to Hamilton. So, you know, yeah. I've seen some shit. Yeah, you don't <clears> see <throat> it. Look, it ain't too much. It ain't no, enough shelter in the world for, you know. Yeah, yeah. NPS. It's only so much sheltering they can do. Yeah. Um. Now, for the people who want to know, like, who is Shannon mm -hmm. and what did you do? What do I do or did I do? What do both? Oh, <laughs> both. that's a good way to put it. Um, <laughs> both. What do I do? I do a lot. So, do I do a lot. I'm just trying to, like, organize it in my head so I could just break things down. So, basically, um, I've been working since I was 14. Like, I've never been one to, like, sit and wait for shit. Like, that's, like... The saying I said, like, if you wait for anybody, you're not going to get shit done. Because right. my mom was also, like, they weren't rich. You know what I'm saying? So she was the type of parent, too. Like, or my parents were like, you have what you need. You know what I'm saying? Like, I got you what you need. You want a cell phone? You're going to pay a cell phone bill. Like, I'm not buying that. You want neighboring? You're going to, you yeah, got you this. Got you know what I'm saying? Like, we ain't never experienced homelessness. We never, like, had our lights out. We never had rice and roaches. But... Just enough for them bills. Yeah, you know paid. what I'm saying? Like, y'all going to be all right. Like, right, right. <laughs> so, yeah. But um, I've been working since I was 14 because of that. And I just feel like it just put some fire under my feet mm -hmm. at a young age to be responsible and take care of business however I had to. So, like, like I said, working since I was 14. Then I saved up enough money to, like, buy supplies to start doing makeup. I started doing makeup, got pretty good at that, started building a little clientele. But then it got to the point where, like, Photographers would be like, why you don't model? And I'm like, I could do that. You know what I'm saying? And then I got into modeling a little bit here and there. And yeah, from modeling, like I started getting real, like paid gigs that did pretty well. I've been published a few times. Um, from modeling, like I've started doing my influencer work where like I've been gaining connections and stuff like that just because I'm always on the scene. Like I host it too at the same time as modeling. So like I just build up my platform, build up my following, like make sure I'm shaking the right hands in the city. And like, you know, being that cordial person where like you ain't in all the mess, but you know enough people. You know what I'm saying? Right, you know right. enough people, you in enough stuff, but you're not in all the bullshit. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because it's those people that's popular, but they popular for being in bullshit all the time. Exactly. You know what and I'm saying? And you, and you strike me as a person to be laid back like you know you popular yeah but you don't really be in no no bs no you know like because it's like once i see that's what you own like you can have that like i'm not on that like you know what i'm saying like i got shit to do for real i got i got mortgage and a rent you know what i'm saying like i'm i don't got time to be playing with nobody and i've always been the type like i mean i'm not one to like run from adversity but at the same time like when it's avoidable like some shit ain't worth my time and my yeah, energy. You gotta, you gotta let the people have it. You yeah, know you saying? gotta let people have it. Like, you know, it's it's one thing, like, when you know your power, you just don't play with certain shit. Like, mm -hmm. stop playing, That's you know? So it's just like, yeah. But from um, the hosting stuff, like, I work in marketing and stuff like that, too, with, like, the influencer stuff. And from then, like, I saved my money up and I have a property now. So, like. I like you mentioned that. Um, congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Um, you're welcome. What is it like to have a property? You have one property or do you have more properties? I have one. So, it's a side-by-side. -side. So, it's two mm -hmm. townhomes. Both sides is three bedrooms, two bathrooms, full basement. And it's, you know, separate, like. Bossed yeah. up, saying, yeah, "Let's go." <laughs> what is that like? Because, like, yeah. a lot of people might want to get into that. Even myself be thinking about yeah. that, like. 
what is that process like of owning your own property mm-hmm. and like rent it out and stuff like that what is that pro- how is it like so i think people like hear it and they think it's glamorous and they only see like people only see the results like because i know i say like yeah i got a property or people like even on the internet yeah i got a property and it brings in this much a month and da da like people it's something to brag on for sure but people forget that it's work like it really mm-hmm. is work like even from like a young age like my mom like i said like she's very knowledgeable knowledgeable from shit she's been through and she like put me on games and stuff like she used to be on my ass about my credit and i'm like my credit like why are we even, what, I'm not trying to get yeah. nothing on my credit and yeah. she's like no like you need to take that seriously so from like 18 I'm like oh let me pay these things off let me make sure my credit is right let me get my credit to a certain thing because when it was time to buy a house and when I had the money to do it I was prepared it wasn't like oh I had this money but they ain't gonna give me a loan for a house because I'm not ready like you gotta be ready so you ain't gotta get ready so like my credit was right I had the money in my bank I had like the work history I needed to have you know what I'm saying so yeah that is dope, man. Shout out to you. Um, you. <clears throat> you're welcome. I think a lot of us didn't take um, credit serious when we was younger. Yeah. And now it's like, you know what I'm saying? Uh, we, we really realize what credit can do for you. Mm-hmm. Credit is a, really like better than money at times. Man. You know what I'm and like we don't realize like the like power of it. Yeah. And like I said, I didn't either. But like I had a mom that was like, no, like pay this bill off. Mm-hmm. Like she used to found me on her taxes still. And she would like give me money. But like she would take some and be like, no, I'm finna pay off that bill they keep sending and i'm like girl like it's because <laughs> right. it's like i'm 18 19 i'm like bro give me my money like i'm trying to spend some money like yeah. but she would be on me about that like you about to get this money i think you should pay this bill i think you should make a payment plan for this i think you should da da da. i think you should get a credit card i'm like i don't need a credit card i think you should get one and build your credit history up like she just always was in the back of my head like and on my heels about certain shit that i didn't understand at the time but thank god she was because when i was ready like i could do it you know i, I didn't have to figure it out when it was time that's a fact man. Yeah. shout out to your moms man yeah. she knew what she was doing and she knew the importance of it um yeah. you know and that's that's dope man shout out to you um with that now, <clears throat> back to the modeling. Mm-hmm. Um, how did you feel about doing that? Like, was it was you nervous about getting into modeling? Because you know, you gotta take pictures in bikini, half dressed, and yeah. stuff like that. What was that like for you? I think I was super nervous because, like, getting into modeling, like my back to my sister, like my life sound like it's made up. But my sister mm-hmm. was kidnapped when she was fourteen because she wanted to be a model, and she went and like to the newspaper and found somebody but they actually was like a sex trafficking ring so that's Mm -hmm. how that happened so I was really like nervous and in my head about it and I wanted to do it but I was just kind of like and I didn't want my mom to be like nervous about it either so I really tiptoed into it and like I was always like I said like in general generally speaking I'm always like sharing my location I'm always like protecting myself I'm always like figuring shit out making sure I'm good so like I think I was nervous of that aspect of it because you do get like even aside from what happened to my sister you do get predators basically like people with a camera that just want to fuck with you and they, they you want to do a bedore shoot like nigga you've been in my dm for 30 years and now you <laughs> want me in a bikini in front of you at your crib and like we can do it in my bed like my no my nigga like you get that a lot like it's a lot of people that really like be with that shit so it's like i think i was nervous of that and i like just as a female, you just really have to, like, build up your confidence enough to be able to, like, stand on what you mean, know what you want to do, and stand on that shit, and know, mm-hmm. like, your limits, know your boundaries, and be like, no, I'm not with that, or I'm with that, and be, like, very voiceful. Yeah, so. I can imagine, because, like, it's a lot of creeps out here that got cameras and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I even seen, I, um, R.I.P. to Kevin Samuels, but I seen he, like, even said something before, like, and you dudes is losing like that's a way to get girls is getting like finding hobbies that women like mm-hmm. you're a photographer you're a videographer you can easily put women but it's like but it's weird like who want yeah. like my in my head like i don't want to have to set a stage to get somebody like if you don't fuck with me you don't fuck with me i don't want to be babe i got this i got this like you want to i got this exactly like, like, it's that's kind of creepy like it's you get a, ca- you get yeah. a camera just to, just for that right like i'm gonna just I'm like, shoot the bitches i want to talk right to. you don't even really have a passion that she just want to get girls <laughs> Excuse me, that's that's weird. Uh, now, I'll never get your pictures back fucking with these people. Like, right. I ain't giving you your pictures right. now. You, like, yeah, you know, pictures for, you know, such and such. Yeah. Um, <laughs> now, how is it being popular? Because you're a popular person. Mm-hmm. I feel like, at least I feel like it. Mm-hmm. And I see you like the party a lot and stuff yeah. like that. What is it like being a popular person? I think people 
how do we put it? Because, like, honestly, like, I don't feel like I'm a celebrity by any means. But, like, at the same time, I feel like when you gain a certain amount of popularity, people think, like, not like they don't. I want to say they think you're more than what you are, but it's a better way to say it. Like, people put you on this pedestal. Like, people are petty and weird. Like, people will take pictures of you while you out. People will try to do certain shit. Like, I've met so many people that aren't genuine that want to be around you to see what you got going on. It's like, I ain't even nobody, money. I'm not Beyonce. It's the energy. But it's that energy, and they want to be around you. They want to kind of like, what you got going on? Who you talk to? Who your friends is? Like, what's going on? How'd you do this? Who do you know? Like, and it's like... That's weird. Like, you want to be around me because you want something or you expect something. Or you got some people that really just want to be around you, but they be haters at the same time. Like, they hate that you're doing what you're doing in the way you do it, but they want to be around you because they really know, like, you that motherfucker. Mm -hmm. So it's really weird, especially when, like, somebody like me, I think of myself as a regular-ass girl, and it's like you can't always let your guard down. You can't always trust that people have the best intent for you because some people don't. Like, you really do be around people where, like, you will be out and they doing a little hating ass shit. You know what I'm saying? You like, you moving weird as a bitch. Like, motherfuckers <laughs> right. want to be around you for those benefits, but they don't fuck with you for real. And I think that's like the biggest thing of being popular. Like, it's hard to know who fuck with you for real. How often do you go through that? Like, when you'll find out somebody like ain't really for you, like, oh, they, this is what they was around you for? All the time. <laughs> All the time. It's fucked up because like, being like a pretty girl, being a popular girl, like, you get niggas like that. Like, even, like, dating, like, you deal with men that are like that, that actually, like, they like you for the uh, novelty. Like, they, oh, she'll be cute to be around. Like, I know she knows such and such. She might be able to put me on in some positions because I know a lot of, like, I have male friends, too, that are successful, that are doing their shit. Like, so it's just, like, you get dudes that want to be around to know what you got going on, who you know, who you be with. So I'm super careful about even, like, I don't even speak on a lot of people that I actually am close with like it's nobody's business like if i'm with you if we talking if we cool i'm not talking about nobody else because people do that like they want to know who you with what you doing who you around like and niggas will date you with those same intentions that a bitch will be your friend for and they will hate on you like it's men that will date a girl that's popping and they cannot handle that and they be hating on you like i done been walking with a nigga and like a girl be like she's so pretty you're blessed to be with her and like he'll be what about me like Okay, bad bitch. Like, dang, yeah. like, you know what I'm saying? Like, crazy. you would get them calls, like, yeah, congratulations on your little property or whatever, right. but I'm finna get one too. Like, I hope In competition. Yeah. Yes. And it'd be full blown grown men, like, that are trying to pursue you, but you snarky. You, you a bad bitch. You give me that bad bitch energy. You wanna be like, you wanna be me. <laughs> right. <laughs> and that's weird, man. Um, it's scary. And I know it's hard to find genuine people. Like, do you have I'm, like do you have friends or close friends or friends, period? I <laughs> do that's funny, because I do. I have I have friends. <laughs> I have a few. Like I have a handful. Like it's probably one person that I speak to on a almost daily basis. One person that actually like knows like my like every detail of my life type shit. Like I don't have a lot of people that I let in for everything because you can't like the way life is set up like you can't have like I have family that knows pretty much every detail of my life but as far as friends like people like that haven't been around since I was born it's probably one person that like I'd be telling everything to because a lot of people like I said they just want to hear what you got going on to gossip about it they want to hear what you got on to see what you can do for them you know what I'm saying so having a genuine friend like that's very rare. That is very rare. Like, you when got friends that you keep around for certain shit, too. Like, mm-hmm. like you're my coffee friend. Like, we talk about coffee and books. Yep. And when you get those people around that's really genuine, you got to keep them in your life because yeah. they hard to come by. And we're living in a time where people just, like, it's, it's, it's an evil time. Like, people just want to gossip and see what you got going on and tell your business just to yeah. have them to talk about. So, and they want to be you. <laughs> they want to be yeah. you. They want to do. And then what, what they say, do anything for clout, that's real. Like, it's scary and we're real. Like, how people will do anything for, like, attention. It's weird. Yeah, I can mm-hmm. imagine that, man. You got to keep your peace safe at all times. Of course. Now, um, when you said you'd be in Vegas and you'd be around the people, mm-hmm. like the women with the bodies, the fake bodies, and the people who got the money, let me ask you something, like, Um, have you ever felt persuaded or like, have you ever wanted to BBL and get operations done? Mm -hmm. So that's a good question because I always talk about this type of stuff. I personally feel like when I was like 
younger like when I was like 19 I like really was like oh I need this done I need that mm -hmm. done like I was really like like I think everybody had a point in their life where they did feel pressured because like when you don't really know yourself, when you're not in tune with yourself, it's easy to be pressured, like, in certain ways. Like, and that's why, like, I encourage people to have confidence and really figure out what the fuck you like and what mm -hmm. you want and you're not riding the next wave mm -hmm. because it be just so many influences that make you feel like, I need this or I want this. And at the end of the day, like, when you get that, if you truly didn't want that because you wanted it, you're not ever going to be happy. Like, you're going to, yep. like, be like, dang, I got this, BBL. But now I want this. Right. I got the titties. Now I need the lips. I yep. got the eyebrows. But now I need like it's never what gonna else? be enough. What it? else? You have to be happy with yourself. So when I was way younger, like I said, like nineteen, yes, I was like, damn, I should get my titties done. Damn, I might need a little BBL. Like, and and you change them. What makes you change your mind? You just realize like I don't need that. I think the confidence in myself, like people just wherever they at, they really have to accept themselves where they at. Like I love myself. Like if you do want better, like you can work towards that. You can go get it, but be confident with who you is and understand like you are great as you are, no matter what. Like you really have to have self love, like for real. Like you really have to love yourself where you are and then fix on stuff if you want to. So like at the end of the day, like when you get that done, like you're not like, damn, I still don't like myself. Cause that'd be the issue. A motherfucker get some shit done and think like this gonna make me happy. Like a motherfucker buy a pair of shoes. This gonna make me happy. This gonna change my life. Yeah. How? Huh. Yeah, and that's a fact. And I want to tell you too. Like you good the way you are. Like you know, yeah. like your vibe. Like dudes is not like wife and no chick with BBL. I ain't gonna say that they don't. Mm -hmm. Like, but really, when we see when women with BBLs ass on the camera, it's automatically instantly I want to smash. Mm -hmm. It's never like oh, I want to be wife her. I'm, I'm just being honest from my standpoint. Yeah. People I know mm -hmm. like. It don't take all that, like, you know what right. I'm saying? You can be big, you can be skinny, you can be petite. Yeah. Like, it's about your mind. It's about, like, because a body is not finna raise no kids and be a good yeah. wife. Like, literally, like, like. And that's why I say, if you want your shit done, yeah, do it. But yeah, work means, on yourself first. Like, be happy with you. Like, in every aspect of being a bad bitch, be that. Like, before you go buy some shit, be okay with who you are and where you are so nobody can shake your confidence. Like, that's a fact. I could be in a tent and I'm going to still think I'm the baddest bitch in the world. You yep. know what I'm saying? Yep. Like, I could lose 200 pounds and gain 200 pounds. And I'm going to be like, I love myself no matter what. I might want something different. Mm -hmm. I'm going to work towards it. But can't nobody shake my confidence. And you that's know? a fact because I met a girl who, like, who was a stag, brick house. <laughs> and I worked with her. She was cool as hell, but she was miserable. Yeah. Like, cried to me and just, I'm like, damn, you? Like, I'm never. You would like, never think half never the people think. that are, like, like that are, like, mentally where they are. Like, you would think, like, this person has mm -hmm. it all. Like, even with rich people. Oh, I got all this money, but I'm not happy. Like, it's people that really think certain things are going to make them happy, and it does not. That comes with, like, working on yourself. You have to really sit with yourself. A lot of people ain't with sitting with themselves and figuring out what they really like, what they really want. A lot of people don't do that, and you have to do that first before you start getting all these, like, material things and thinking it's going to fix them because you're going to feel worse at the end of the day because it's like, uh -huh. damn, I just spent this money on this, and I'm still not And I'm happy. still feeling this way. Matter of fact, I'm like, I feel worse. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> what the <laughs> fuck is wrong with me? I got everything, and I'm still not happy. Mm -hmm. So, like, you really have to do that work on yourself, and I, like, encourage everybody to do that shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and love yourself. True love is – self-love is the best love, and – um. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's a, like. Do you feel like it's a lot of like the the Instagram and so social media that really make people feel this way, or you think it's just beyond? Because you know a lot of people are like, man, it's social media. Like yeah. social media make people feel like this is what you need, or it's mm -hmm. supposed to have this now, or this and that. So I do in a sense, but I feel like people being like. I ain't trying to call people stupid, but people being fucking stupid is their problem. Like, you're dumb. That's mm -hmm. why you're not happy, bro. You're stupid. Like, no, but like, mm -hmm. not to be that person, but like, for real, like, I think people believe in that. Like, me and you can take a picture right now and I'll be like, oh, I'm so in love. He treats me so well. Like, what? Like, and people would be on social media like, man, that's a good couple. Like, we just met each other and we just like, we, what? <laughs> like, people believe whatever you post on the yeah. internet and that's their problem. Like, you cannot be that easily manipulated to believe some shit. Like, a motherfucker, because I could take a picture. This is my new house. I just bought this whole apartment. Like, they're going to be like... Congratulations. Congratulations. This bitch really doing it. Dang, I ain't got slide. nothing. I just walked <laughs> oh, in here. Yeah. Like, people are like that for real. And it's up to you to really be like, you know, I don't know what these people got going on behind closed doors. Congratulations to you, but I'm not where you are. Everybody has their own journey. If it is your house, if it is their shit, that's great for you. But you also have to understand like it's social media it could be manipulated it could be fake some of these girls like these beauty standards these girls are living up to even like you said like is it social media 
Half them bitches that got their body done is editing their shit to fucking space, okay? Like, they are editing their bodies on top of having their body done. Like, you didn't got your body done, but they don't mention about how a lot of these BBLs are botched. They don't mention how, like, once you get, like, this one thing done, something else can be wrong. Like, they don't mention that type of shit. Because, like, it's a lot of girls that I know and a lot of people I know that do photography to be like... Yeah, can you, she got can her you body make this look, Can you make this look like that? Yeah. Can you make me look they real don't slimmer even look like that. These yeah. girls that people want to be like, they ain't even like that in real life. So it's like people really have to understand, like, not everything is what it seems. It's okay to be happy for somebody and be like, okay, that's what's up. But don't ever compare yourself to something that you really don't know. Like, you, first of all, like, you should never compare yourself to nobody. Like, nobody. I don't even do that. Like yep. I said, you, everybody, like... People used to say like something to me and it used to bother me like, oh, you think you all that or like little shit like that. Like, <laughs> and that'll shake my confidence because I'm like, damn, maybe I need to tune it down. But now like I got into a thing where I'm like, you should too. Yeah, hell yeah, I'm the baddest bitch in the world and you are too. Like, you should feel that way. You, you should feel that way about yourself. Like, you, you should. Like, there's no reason you can't be the baddest bitch in the world too. Like, you really supposed to have that unshaking confidence. And I feel like people really letting the internet manipulate their minds, believing everything they see mm -hmm. and not having confidence in themselves and not being happy with themselves, like that's the real issue here. Like Yeah. That definitely is is confidence and um self confidence, self love, uh, yeah. dealing with trauma, dealing with childhood trauma, dealing with stuff that's going on now. Mm -hmm. It's a lot, and uh, it's good to see that mental health is coming into play, and people need therapy because you know a lot of people need therapy and stuff like that. And yeah. It's good to hear people talk about that and bring it into the light. Mm -hmm. Now let's get into the like the deeper topics I want to talk about. Like, is Shannon in a relationship or is Shannon single? <laughs> Well, <laughs> I told you they be pimping in Vegas, so call me. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> okay. I ain't pimping, y'all. But mm -hmm. no, I, I'm single. I'm very, very 100% single. I've been single for years. And like, I've dated. I've given people chances that I shouldn't have given chances to. And I've just learned that people full of shit. So I... Now, when you say people full of shit, it's like... What is they is the dudes you gave a chance or the people you gave chances to? Mm -hmm. Or were they cheaters or were they lying about a lifestyle or what was, what was, what was going on? You got, you got about three hours because I can run down a whole list. He like, uh -huh, go ahead, <laughs> tell us all. <laughs> no, but so <clears throat> I feel like one thing that came on my self love journey mm -hmm. was being okay with being by myself. So it's a blessing and a curse because like. As soon as I know, like, I don't want this and I'm not going to put up with that, I will leave. And I'm not, I'm okay with that. Like, I might be sad. I might be like, aw, hmm, I liked you. But, like, you can get the fuck on. Like, it ain't no, baby, don't go. I want you to stay. You got to go. Right. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, once you don't serve what I need you to serve, once you're not giving, like, you got to go. Like, I'm good on all of that. Like, I don't care who the fuck you are. Like, if you are, like, detrimental to what I have going on, you have to go. Like, if you're detrimental to my mental, my actual health, because a lot of these niggas is detrimental to your actual health. A lot of these niggas is, like, fucking up y'all mental health. Y'all running around here fighting everybody from sun up to sun down. <laughs> ain't been to work in three days. The baby in the room crying. Like, uh-uh. I'm not having that. Yeah. I, don't, I don't play like that with no motherfucking body. I could literally be in love. Like, dead set in love and, like, Soon you do one thing, oh, you got to go. Especially yeah. if you really cross a line, no. But I feel like for the most part in my dating life, like I said, it's been people living double lives. People get comfortable and then they feel like they could do you anyway. This and not that. Like, I feel like specifically like the Milwaukee dating scene, <laughs> everybody know everybody, but people still think they slick. And it's kind of weird to me because it's like, I could be a person that don't talk to nobody, but you're bound to see something. You know what I'm saying? Or somebody bound to tell you Perhaps. something. Something's bound to come up. Like, people really be thinking they slick. And that player mentality that, like, motherfuckers thinking they are, like, obligated or need more than one girl, that's weird to me, too. Because, like, that also comes with, like, a lot of these niggas don't know their worth. A lot of these niggas don't love their self. A lot of these niggas are looking for something yeah, that they cannot fact. find. Like, mm -hmm. it's weird to me when we in mid-20s, upper 30s, and you're still... Uh, trying to have that, especially in the thirties, you're trying to have that yeah. player mentality. Like, like, what What's happened? Wrong? What What do you need that you haven't done already? You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, 
It's weird. It's, like it's too much going on out here. It's too many diseases, man, and it's too many like like deaths. It's, it's like a lot of feelings like getting involved. Like Dude. that stuff is dangerous, and that stuff like at this point it's like, bro, stop playing with people. Yeah, and that's you know what, what you run into a lot. Like I've had like times where like I give somebody my number, the next day a bitch calling my phone. Huh? Come come, come delete the number out your. Listen, I ain't even the one. Like I'm not. Over, come right, come right. get your boo. Like I don't want them. <laughs> That's crazy. Like, man. it's sick. Like, and people do it. And I'm like you said, it's too many deaths out here. Specifically, like, especially Milwaukee, that shit happen all the time. Like, it's I'm all not, time, listen, huh? motherfuckers is killing over these bitches. Niggas is, you know what I'm saying? Like, going to jail over these bitches. These bitches is going to jail over these niggas. Motherfuckers is really crashing out over somebody that, like, literally, at, at some point, you have to accept that this motherfucker not shit. And you, y'all you damn near single, but, like, got some type of, like, Ties tie together. or something. Like, it's weird. Like, people aren't honest. I feel like I'm I'm a type of person where I will tell you, like, you know, if I'm talking to somebody else, I don't have to tell you who it is because that's not your business. But I will say, like, I'm talking to somebody else, blah, blah, blah. I set boundaries. I make sure motherfuckers know what's going on out of respect. Like, you have, it's a respect thing. You have to respect somebody enough to let them know what the fuck is going on. And then, like, when you're dealing with other people, like, I don't want nobody at my house and then a nigga at my door or climbing through my window. Like, why would you even put somebody in that position? But niggas do it. Bitches do it. Like, and it's weird because some people get, like, a sick thrill from that shit for real. Like, yeah. I ain't got time And that's it. crazy. That's not that's not cute at all. It's, it's like, not. it's dangerous. And it, like, made people, like, not want to date. And it's hard to love and trust people, like, in this, mm-hmm. in this time and age. Like, no, for so real. So that's why if you really got somebody that's solid, like, you know, you need to hold them down. Mm-hmm. Y'all might go through your problems, but, like, let's fix it. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Talk about it. Being a adult about it. Own up to your, you know, your actions and your accountability. Mm-hmm. And just talk about it and try to work it out. Because I ain't saying, like, you know, if, if you know somebody ain't right for you. Right. Don't start over and let that person go. I'm not saying. That, but yeah. I'm saying if you see but if it's something that you can work through if it's like yeah. like I saw uh, something on Facebook that said like cheating beating on you doing this and doing this is yeah. not something you can like just we gonna talk it out like it's certain shit like if y'all having little issues whatever like y'all not agreeing on certain things like if it's something you can actually work out but if it's like a complete like disaster like let that shit go uh, just, like yeah. it's certain shit like I said like people have boundaries people have things that they're like I can't deal with this and the motherfucker really Go and make you deal with the shit, like bro. Yeah. I t- this was my one rule. I don't like chickens, and you didn't bought a whole coop. Like, what is wrong with you? Like, right. Right. You got to have respect, pal. A lot of people just be trying to see what they can get away with. You know what? But that's what it be about. I feel like. Look, I'm like. Look, I'm ahead, talking like a joke. You know what else? Look, go ahead. Talk. Look, I feel ahead. like it be a point where people almost they get a thrill out of trying to push the limits with people too. Like, and a lot of people don't even really like a person, but they'll put on the front. Just like I said earlier, like a lot of people will put on the front like they like you and they fuck with you just because they want to be in your space. They could know they are completely wrong for a person and still pursue that person. They could know like, I don't want shit else from you, but they will lie, pursue you, not be up front like, yo, like I'm not looking for nothing serious. I'm just trying to fuck. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, when you up front <laughs> yeah. with people, a lot of times, motherfuckers still go for some shit. Like, when you're honest, like, they, shit, me too, fuck it. But a motherfucker be pillow talking, telling the next bitch Lying. business, lying and shit. That's when confusion comes in. That's when all the bullshit starts to happen. Mm-hmm. People just not honest. And that's when I when I was single and stuff like that, I was I was always letting it be known. I wasn't really looking for a relationship. I'm just looking for friendship. Whatever happens, happens. Yeah. But I just always, like, you know, let it be known. But... Apparently, like, you know, when yo, you might say one thing, but your actions show another. It's kind of tricky in that Ooh, situation. That's when it get tricky. That's it's kind of tricky. So, but look, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, excuse me, as mm-hmm. long as you be up front with somebody and tell them, like, I just got out of something. I ain't trying to get into nothing. Like, mm-hmm. we smash, we smash, but yeah. let's hang, let's chill, you know, let's be cool. But um, For the most part, it works. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? For the most part, it works right. because you're not lying to somebody and they don't have no grounds to stand on when you're like, you know, I'm like, I, I've met people that be like, I tell like my other people, oh, I'm going on a date today. You, We ain't in a relationship. We haven't established that. We haven't had a sit down like, yo, I like you. You like me. I don't want you dating other people. Do you want me dating somebody else? No. Okay, let's be together. That's the conversation that's to be had if you feel that way about somebody. But right. you know what I'm saying? Like, I've met people that be like, you know, I'm going on a date. And they're dating. Some, like, I'm dating multiple people. And people are okay with that because they understand, like, you ain't step up to the plate. We both single. So I don't have a reason to pop up and climb through your window. You're not telling me, like, you're the only one. I only fuck with you. And I mm-hmm. love you. Like. Right. 
Now, and you also like, you know what I'm saying, um, you have those people who might feel entitled or feel like and jealous, like even though y'all not together, they be like, oh, you talking to somebody else? Or oh, you mm-hmm. both be just talking to me? Like, no, that's not how it works. Right. And Until them, you step up to the plate, we can talk to whoever <laughs> we want to talk to. You know exactly. And them people be the motherfuckers you need to like, okay, clearly we're not understanding. It's the same. Like, you are you don't have the same energy I have towards this. Mm-hmm. So it's okay to let people go. People don't want to let nobody go either because like it's been times where I'm like, listen, we cool right now, but from what you're saying you want and what I want right now, it's mm-hmm. not the same thing. We shouldn't be talking. And motherfucker, no, I could change out. You know what? Yes, I do. It's like playing. No, I, I feel like a lot of people, uh, when that happens, I feel like it's a sense of way that nobody, that person don't want to be by themselves. Yeah. And that's a problem though. Like, I don't want to be with nobody. I honestly, like, my end person will not be a person that hasn't worked on themselves. And it's so many people, like like I said, I'm noticing how many grown people have not worked on themselves. Mm-hmm. How many grown people have not been single for a long enough time to really get to know, like, because I feel like my first relationship, I was with him for, like, whole high school, years out of high school. So you got to think that's four years. And then out of high school, a few years. That's like, you know what I'm saying? That's you know, like, like six, eight years Yeah. Or so it's that's like, like me. that first relationship, like, now that I'm, like, a few years older, I'm like, I didn't even know what the fuck I wanted. You right, know what I'm saying? I was right. just like, he's cute. I'm cute. It's high school. We look good together. <laughs> he, he bought me McDonald's. <laughs> I like him. Whatever. Like, right. he, he bought me some weave. Eh, like, yeah. You get older and you, you start realizing. Older. like, uh, What the fuck did I want from you? Like, we're not the same people. We don't like the same things. We come from different backgrounds that don't even, would never hit clash if it wasn't for MPS. Like, it's certain stuff where, like, you grow to love a person, but you also realize it's like, we never were meant to be in love. We were never meant to be together. Like, people don't realize, like, not everything that looks good to you is mm-hmm. for you. It's yep. just not. So every day in glitter ain't gold. No, for know. real. <laughs> like people, but you know how people are over gold and diamonds and shit. People want it. Like they yeah. just want it. It might That's not even fact. be good for you. Like, let me ask you. Um, what type of guys do you like? Well, <laughs> <laughs> you <were. laughs> I feel like oh, people be irritated with me because I really don't have a type. Like it's, a, I'm a weirdo, first of all. So like, I don't have a type. Like I really date off I, of I a wouldn't, vibe. I have to cut you off. Mm-hmm. That's nothing weird about that. Yeah, yeah. like I tell people that it was like, well, everybody got some preference. I, I hate when people say like we, well, you know, you know, we make things weird that ain't supposed to be weird. Yes, you know what I'm saying? Like by you having not having a type, but you open to a lot of different things. That's nothing weird about that. Yeah, because I'm one of those people. Like I live my life on experiences. Like mm-hmm. I love creating experiences. I love like, oh, you going skiing? I want, I want to try that. Like you, you finna eat what? I'm, I'm, you know what? What that tastes like? Like I'm not one yeah. of them people. Like. Like, I eat sushi, and a lot of, like, people I end up speaking to, and I'm like, you know, I like sushi. You want to go for sushi? Oh, that look nasty. Like, have you ever had it? No. Like, I don't, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but see, like, I'm the type of person, I'm open to whatever. Like, especially if it's not going to kill me. Like, shit, well, fuck it. It ain't going to hurt to try. Look, mm-hmm. you said you eat dirt. Give me a spoon. Like, I just want to <laughs> see. Give me a spoon. <laughs> Sweet dirt. Let me see. Let me, Let me make see what that tastes like. <laughs> but, oh, this tastes pretty good. Yeah, you know. I've been look. I said it was nasty this whole time. I ain't even know nothing. But yeah. I'm just one of them people that like I like experiences. I like different things. I like you know like getting to know people because like everybody got a story. Everybody's interested in some way. Like just getting to know like you know. So I just be attracted. Like obviously like looking at a motherfucker. Like you gonna be like damn this person look good. Like mm-hmm. okay. Now let me ask you because you seem like I like your energy. You seem like a real good person. Aww. And you know, just seeing how you is like a lot of people might get intimidated to talk to you because yes. they might feel like you know you you know who you remind me of, like that popular girl in school that that was with all the, like you know that they had the basketball players trying to holler at all the popular people, <laughs> but it's this dude that like you know people scared to come up to you like oh I ain't popular enough yeah but hearing you and just being around you be like that's not the case no that's not the case at all um mm-hmm. like ha- like what like let me see. What is the type of guy that you dated that somebody would never thought you would have dated? Well, look, speaking of high school, no, I'm just kidding. Mm-hmm. I feel like I, de- I dated my share of hood niggas. Mm-hmm. And somebody, people be like, bitch, what? I'm like, I know. But wait a minute, don't every girl have they, like, they, they, they moment of bad of, boy of, face? Oh, yeah, yeah, think, bad boy face. I think so. I think so. I think a lot of people um, want 
somebody that's like I don't know how to like I don't want to say like they want what doesn't want them but I feel like they like people with confidence that's what it is and a lot of bad boys like they're rebels and they have confidence like it takes confidence to be like out here you know what I'm saying like people are attracted to confidence people are attracted to somebody that's like you know what I'm saying I'm bold I, I'm da 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 like people just yeah and, you know? and what I take from the hood like the bad boys is like like, you know how you watch the TV shows about, you know, them shows would be like, how to be a bad boy and be like, you got to show like you don't give a fuck about the yeah, person. Yeah, like, but. I don't give a fuck about her versus the good dude. Be like, hey, good morning, queen. is always by you, always in your right. face. It's like, is it something about a bad boy that like, he shows that he don't really give a fuck, but he really fuck with you? I think what it is, is that confidence. Because, like, I think we, like, we do, like, blur the lines between confidence and not giving a fuck. Like, somebody being, like, indifferent. Mm -hmm. And, like, I think what it really is, is, like, we, everybody wants somebody, like, no matter who you is. You don't, like, you don't even got to be the best looking person. Have you ever seen that? Because I've seen it before where I'm yeah. like, that motherfucker ugly as fuck. But because that motherfucker come in there, like, they own the room, everybody, like. Yeah. They, they gravitate towards that person like we like confidence people like somebody that stand on their shit like okay this person could be a protector like right. and they don't yeah. be shit as a motherfucking all but that's a longer story <laughs> yeah <laughs> or can just be like you can make somebody laugh you know how to have a conversation you know how to talk exactly and that I, takes confidence I, I, I would look at myself as somebody who had confidence yeah. but at the same time sometimes I didn't have confidence but mm -hmm. I'd be with my guys or something and they'd be like you just went to go talk to her? Like, yeah, what the, what's the worst you can say out, is no. And then they be like, damn, how you do that? But it's the confidence. Uh, it's like, I be looking at them like, y'all should be the one going before me. Like, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like, what's the worst somebody can say is exactly. no. And I've dated, like, nerds before. You know what I'm saying? Where people be like, girl, what? Who you dating? Look, what? And I'm like, <laughs> he's nice. Like, he right. wasn't scared to talk to me. Like you said, people get intimidated to the point where, like, a lot of people are scared to approach me where they'll say, like, dang like I thought you was gonna be mean I thought you was gonna be this so like when people approach me and they can hold a conversation like you said like you can hold a conversation you're funny like you confident like people be like you know what this motherfucker cool like I'm gonna go kick it and like kicking it hanging out going on dates that turn into something sometimes so. it, it does cause the more you're around somebody and you get to being around a vibe mm -hmm. it's everything I'm all about vibes like yes. if I can't vibe with you or I sense something like yeah, I don't think I wanna yeah, be around, that, be around person. that shit Look. you got a little bad little vibe on you know I don't really wanna fuck Ooh. around with you exactly <clears throat> but that's that's dope though like that you not like picky and stuff like that yeah. I think somebody watching this who, who's really liking you yeah. Don't have that confidence to get in your DM. <laughs> Don't or have even, too much confidence now, y'all. No, yeah. <laughs> people see, be trying to kidnap me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? No, all all, all y'all who who weird or who on some weird time like that don't even get in the DMs. But <laughs> all of you, all all of y'all who have a genuine heart and really exactly. like like Shannon and yeah. feel confident, go ahead and shoot, shoot your shot. shot. But you never I will know what's say. gonna happen. One thing, I, I don't have a preference, but I do have a set of things that'll set motherfuckers apart. What's that? And I'm going to put them on. Because I, I don't think I've revealed this before. So I'm going to reveal it here today. <laughs> the set of things. Like, I was just thinking the other day. I'm like, I think I heard a podcast. People like, they only like guys with money. They only like da-da-da. But honestly, like, I was thinking to myself, like, there's certain things that, like, set people apart. And I don't even think it's specifically like, oh, I want a rich nigga. I want somebody da-da-da, like, to trick on me. It's girls like gifts. Like, when you buy somebody flowers, when you like, hey, when you're considerate, are you hungry? Like, I, let me send you some food, like little stupid shit like that. You ain't even got to be a trick. It don't take nothing to do little stuff like that. So if you're not like That's that, if you're not giving princess treatment, I'm not even going to lie. Like, I don't give a fuck who you are. Like, I'm not fucking with you. That's a fact. Y'all take notes. And y'all hearing this from a, somebody right now that, you know what I'm saying, a lot of dudes be all in their DMs but don't know. Yeah what it takes to treat a woman and stuff like no, that. No, and they don't. It's so many men that are, that's simping, that's tricking, like, well, yeah. go, go be with your, your guy. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Right, and it's usually the dudes and the people who make things that's supposed to be normal, not normal. Yes. You know what I mean? So. And that's exactly what it is. Like, like I said, like, a lot of people are like, oh, that's some city girl shit that's tricking and it's not. Like, it's like, girls like gifts so i like gifts like even like just thoughtful shit to let a motherfucker know like you're thinking of me because i'm that type of person like if i'm fucking with somebody i'm gonna be like oh i'm here do you need anything oh la, la, la. like oh you said you're sick do you need this do you want yeah. this like just little shit like that that ain't tricking yep. like or not even have to ask the person just just study them and listen yeah. what they like well, okay like you overheard her saying damn i need these new airpods like airpods what a hundred dollars like and you be like 
hey, I bought you them AirPods that you said you need little shit like that. Girls love that shit. Like, you ain't got to be, I sold my house and I gave her all my money. Like, <laughs> it ain't even got to be that. Like, my guy, like, it's not right. that deep. And I like guys with confidence. Because yeah. when people lack confidence, you run into them jealous niggas. Yeah, you, you got to take notes, man. Y'all take notes. Take notes. Mm -hmm. Confidence, gifts, and be very fucking nice. Be kind to me. I don't care what you do with nobody else, but be nice. Because <laughs> niggas be mean. <laughs> Now, um, being out in Vegas or just period, right. wherever you was at, here or Vegas, has anybody ever tried to get you into like prostituting or like you know, like you know, pick you out or recruit you? So I know I was telling you off camera, like I have a personality where I'm super bubbly and I'm super friendly. So people think like, oh, she's just peace and love, and I love that for her. <laughs> But with, like, being a pretty girl, with that type of personality, you are naturally going to attract people that think they can fucking play with you. That's just natural. Like like I said, some photographers be predators. Mm -hmm. Some, like, it be predators out here that really are preying on people that have a, like, oh, you have such a kind heart. Mm, I love that for you. Like, but they want to, they love that because they can yeah. use that. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So, long story short, yes. Like, like I said, with great beauty comes great responsibility. No, I'm just like, but seriously, mm -hmm, like, facts. people will play with you. And, like, I was talking to this dude for a long time. Like, if he sees this, <laughs> your mama ain't... No, I'm just playing. But, no, like, <laughs> I was it. talking to this Talk dude. Your shit. And it was funny because, like, I was, like, fucking with him. And I have a kind personality. And, I, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just an open person. I, I embrace people. I don't... So, my thing is, people be like, you fucking bipolar. But I'm not. It's more so, like, I am peace and love. But when you try me... You're going to know when you cross that motherfucking line. You're going to know, like, I pissed this girl off. Because it's not, no, like, hey, you hurt my feelings. No, it's going to be like, I'm shaking the room. Like, yeah. okay, like, it's right. like peace and love until it ain't. Like, that's why it's like, I love giving love. Like, I love giving positive energy. I love, like, showing love to people. But, like, me and this dude was talking and stuff. And, like, we went to a real nice restaurant, whatever, for the first date. And I'm like, okay. And he said something, like, he made a comment that stuck with me. And I'm like, okay, it's certain things, y'all. Ladies, if you are outside, if you hear me, if you're a pretty girl, you a little ditzy, whatever, there are certain cues a nigga say when you know he is trying to recruit you, babe. Don't be a dumb bitch. Like, because you got these pimps that are like... Like, they ain't gorilla pimping. They ain't beating bitches and making you, like, you, yeah. gonna, you gonna do this, bitch. Like, there is niggas that'll make you feel like, he love me. We in a relationship. Mm, let me hold him down. Oh, yeah. now I gotta, you know what I'm saying? So, we were dating. And this nigga was like, um, yeah, like, normally, like, girls pay for my stuff. <laughs> the fuck he talking <laughs> You don't know who you talking to. <laughs> and, like, he made that comment. And it was just in the back of my mind for a long time. And it came a point where he was like, um, I'm moving out of state. I want you to come with me, da 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 But you work a regular job. I don't think that's going to work. <laughs> what the fuck you talking about, buddy? Mm -hmm. This nigga was like, you know what I mean? Dancing and this and that. Any man, let me tell y'all, any man that suggests that you dance, likely, this is how it all was going to play out. First of all, let me tell you how this ended when he Talk said that. Him. I cussed that man out so motherfucking clean. I said, by the time I'm done with you, bitch, you're going to be selling ass for me. Stop fucking playing with me. Like, my whole, like, like I said, y'all, like, I am loving light. But, like, when motherfucker crossed that line, baby, I said, I will beat the fuck out. You do not ever play with me like that. Mm -hmm. He, like, to this day, like, we're cool. Hey, buddy. Like, he'll hit me up, like, and check on me and be like, how you been? Hey. <laughs> hey, how your crazy ass is? Because when I say, I, like, black out on this nigga like do not play with me bro like this ain't yeah. that this motherfucker like like I said people will be like you're bipolar you're crazy and it's like I'm not I'm just like really like loving and I'm free and I want I want to be open with people I want to give love to the world like but people really take that like a lot of people take that and be like I can get over on this person and this ain't that cause yeah. one, once we there <laughs> what they say it's up and it's stuck it's not fun for nobody no more when I get back acting crazy cause I don't stop but like right. I said, like it was like a lot of these dudes, like they be like on some like it don't even be like I'm gonna beat your ass and you're gonna sell a pussy. It be, look, can I say stuff like that? Yeah, 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 yeah. We wrong. We <laughs> wrong. Don't be like that. <laughs> it don't be like that. It more so be like mm -hmm. a nigga make you feel like they're your boyfriend, make sure make you feel like they're for you. And any nigga like to me that's gonna be like, oh yeah, like I think you should dance, bitch. What's the next step? Oh, I think I should manage you. 
oh you should make this much much a month and then mm-hmm. suddenly like a motherfucker so deep in before you look up a motherfucker then ran circles around you that's not happening my nigga like yeah. that's like I be catching on and shit like I love to act stupid like I, <laughs> I, I catch everything like I love being yeah. free like I said I love being free I love giving love but I'm always on, on, on point. point she's on point like I said like I'm from Milwaukee like people are like oh you're from Wisconsin I'm like yeah mm, yeah Wisconsin but Milwaukee to be specific do not play yeah. with me bro like right. what like and you're on point you give me that vibe but you're always on point I can tell yeah. you you here to handle business you're not gonna be playing around Period. you're not you know, nobody can play around mm-hmm. with you you handle your business you're independent you give me that vibe you give off mm-hmm. that energy mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying so like I said it be every now and then a motherfucker definitely gonna try cause they really like don't see past like the the outer shell that you give like okay she's a pretty girl she's always happy she a little ditzy she funny she goof mm-hmm. around Right. What do she even do for a living? Because a lot of people don't know what I do. Like I didn't bust it down to you, but it's like a lot of people be like, "What do this bitch do?" Like right. she be on when I do posting my stories. This bitch be outside. Like outside, you know what I'm saying? What does she do? But that's a good thing though. You got to keep people wondering. Like yeah. that, that shows you here. A lot of people don't have access to who you are and what you no. really are and what you do. You know. And what like saying? I said earlier, a lot of people don't like. I have like one or two friends that might like know my day to day and know everything that's going on with me know who I talk to who I deal with where it's at like but that's even strategic like my family knowing like how I share my location what they know about what like it's strategic when it comes to me because like mm-hmm. this is che- life is chess not checkers for yeah. real yeah. so like man like you just gotta be careful even with friends like I have friends literally like where they'll be like let's go get coffee and hookah and talk fine and it's nothing past that like they don't know I know oh boy in the hood that da 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 like when I hang yep. with these motherfuckers like they know me for that you know what I'm saying like and it's nobody else's business what a motherfucker got going on unless them are that, your core people that need to know what the fuck you got going that's on that's a fact that's everybody right. need their core little people and then other than that like I got people to party with I got people to go get dinner with I got people to go get tea with I got people to go get coffee with and I got people that read is. books <laughs> I got people that want to go yep. dance like I love everybody for what they are like and that's all about yeah. life. You know, you got to have different friends for different things. And mm-hmm. if it fits you, it fits you. Mm-hmm. Simple as that. Yeah, man. So that happened. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yep. So that did happen. And people, I like, I feel like the need to even like have shared that because it's like a lot of people would think like, don't nobody play with you. Like, because I've had that com- like conversation with girls before. Like, bro, like I didn't been play. Like, niggas play in my face all the time. And they be like, Hell no! Ain't no way niggas be playing in your face. I'm like, <laughs> they tried it. They try it, but the difference is, oh yeah, you gonna you gonna play, but I'm gonna let you know you're not gonna play. Like and like I said earlier, like once a person is not like what I wanted them to be, or I see it's not working. I don't care how I feel about you. You can go. Like I will be okay. Like I might be salty. I'm like everybody has feelings. Everybody's like damn. Like. I thought you were that guy. I thought you was that nigga. Like, damn, I really was fucking with you, but. Yep. So you have never, like, held on to something? Like, even if it, like, it hurted you, you never held on? Like, let me I did on. it. Look, what Boosie said, I got my heart broke at 15. That was way, way back. Oh, that's, that's what 15. happened. One time, my nigga, like, I don't. <laughs> personally, I don't understand people that keep doing it. I did it one time. And when I say, like, I went back to this person a million times, like, went through like it's nothing under the sun like this person didn't put me through and i was just like damn like when i'm gonna be over this motherfucker like and when i got out of that oh i will never go back to that like i said i could be in love with somebody i could literally like have love for somebody but i can understand this person ain't for me and you gotta go Mm -hmm. like you you shaking the room buddy like this ain't it like you threw my ph balance off you (laughs) broke my heart i'm I'm (laughs) fucked up in the head i can't even i can't get business done you're a liability to me like you're you're throwing me off my game i ain't making the same amount of money i used to make i'm not going to work like i used to go i'm not checking on my family like i used to check on like a bad relationship has the fucking like that sh- people really underrate the like power of love because like once you love somebody like it just has so much control over you like some people do not have like deserve to have that much control over you and once I figure out you don't deserve to have that much control over me you have to fucking go I don't give a fuck how bad it hurts I don't care how much I love you I don't care how much I care like after that one experience I had like I know what I do not like I know like and honestly like it's been experiences in between that too where it's like we talked for a few months and I'm like, I'm really feeling this person, but they didn't did some shit where I'm like, this is not forgivable. Yeah. And if we continue on, you're going to keep doing that. Cause at some point you have to realize it's a character flaw. It's not a, 
oh, oopsie, I spilled milk, my bad. Like, no, like, you out here intentionally fucking bitches. You out here intentionally, like, putting me in positions that I'm telling you, I'm not comfortable with this. I'm telling you, like, listen, I'm single, you're single, so tell me what's going on, and you're bullshitting me? Oh, no, you gotta go. Yeah. It's certain stuff that's and not, no. If you can't keep it real and you're single, it's like, what you gonna do when we in a relationship? But the problem is people really continue on with those situations because they be like infatuated with somebody and they be like, you know what? I'm going to keep fucking with this person. This person going to change. And that's in the talking stage that people do that. When you do that shit in the talking stage, imagine what you're going to accept when you are completely in love with this person. You're all in with this person. You ought to, well, we didn't been together a year now. I might as well. We done moved in together. When you start adding more and more to shit, like it just gets more complicated. So I'm so fucking, my friend was like, Girl, like, you act like a nigga how quick you would cut some shit off and, like, be like, I'm done. Mm -hmm. It ain't even act like a nigga. It's just respecting yourself and having them boundaries for real, Thanks. like, and standing on that shit. Like, I stand on shit for real. Like, I don't give a fuck. Like, I could be like, I love you today, but you do some fuck shit tomorrow, I swear to God, by the, the following business day, you will never find me now, again. Now, what, what is some fuck shit besides, <laughs> like, if anybody did some fuck shit besides, like, cheat and stuff, like, what is some fuck shit considered to you? Like, do you... Cause it makes somebody might be out here watching. It's like, damn, she don't give a nigga a chance. Like, if I fuck up just on accident, she ain't give me no chance. That's not fair. I mean, I, I honestly, like I said, like mostly it's been like lies, like blatant lies. Like, like I said earlier, like when you lie about one thing, my brain is like I start adding the dots and going off of these other situations. Like, if this happened, what would this motherfucker do? If this happened, what would this motherfucker say? Like, if you're a liar, that is a character flaw. I cannot fuck with you. I'm good. It's female friends. Like, I was just talking to one of my girlfriends, and she was just like, one of her friends talked to a dude that she was talking to. And, like, she told her, like, bitch, mm. I, I fuck with this person. And for you to continue that on, that's a character flaw to me. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. if my friend told me, like, bitch, I fuck with this person. Oh, we both cutting this nigga off. It's time to go. Ain't nobody holding on to that. You Nah, bro. Like, it's been times where, like, I don't even know this girl, but I know, like, she think y'all in love, my nigga, and you talking to me? You have to go. Like, it's certain things that are a character yeah. flaw. It's not, like, spilled milk. Like, fucking up a little bit, like, not being able to do this or, like, not coming through for me here and there. Like, okay, you fucked I up. I had a situation like that where I could have just been like, I ain't fucked to nobody because I was talking to this one girl before mm -hmm. back in my single days. Okay. And I found out she was friends with this other girl. I was like, I went on a date with her. I'm like, oh. Let me just come out and say it now because I ain't, I ain't got I ain't finna go through this. But like, just okay, being that girl. honest and upfront, like, that's respectable. You know what I'm saying? But it's the niggas that'll be like trying to pursue you. Like, I've had niggas try to talk to me and they know they didn't fuck with my friend. You know what I'm saying? Like, that shit weak as a bitch. Why would I keep talking to you if you did some shit like that? Imagine what else you would try to get over right. on. You get what I'm saying? Like, right. you, like, that's like me. Oh, I'm talking to you and I know I fucked with your brother. Mm -hmm. I know this. That's foul. Why would I continue this conversation? Why would I continue fucking with you and I know what the fuck I didn't did? Like, people aren't upfront and they're not honest. I don't fuck with shit like that. Like, if you're one of those people that are like just doing, moving shady, Hell no. Some yeah, stuff, like yeah. I said, it's nothing I could change. Once you're past 25, I've said this a million times, your frontal lobe is fully developed. You, Your brain is developed now. Your whole brain. 25, that's when your brain is completely developed. Yeah. What's your excuse to be like 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32? And you are lying. You're cheating. You're like setting plays on bitches. Like, no. Like, I've, like... Y'all, <laughs> like, no excuses. It's no excuses at a certain no point. Like, it's just like, bro, like, certain things I cannot accept. Mm -hmm. And, like, I said, like, it's the big stuff. But what's weird is, like, the big stuff happens a lot. Like, my friend was like, girl, they be putting you through the ringer. I was like, yes, because people will try you. And I love that I, like, have that love and personality because it gives people a chance to be themselves. Like, I accept anybody the way they are, but it also gives people a chance to be themselves. And I can actually be like, yo, I'm gonna tell you right now, this ain't it. You're you, I'm me, and it's cute, but no. All right, and there it is. That's how you gotta be. And that's what he is. Mm -hmm. Cause um, I didn't even do it. Now, um, let me ask you this: Do you think it's hard for men to commit? And if so, why do you think it's hard? <sighs> Look, see, y'all ain't gonna like my answer. No, I'm just saying. Honestly, let's talk about it. 
I just feel like for so long, men were allowed to do whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like where it was just normalized. So people, a lot of guys don't even have that concept to like commit. You know what I'm saying? Like it's like very, more times than not, men are just raised to do whatever and it to be excused like boys will be boys. Like he's a man, he's going to do that. So like nobody is like holding people accountable. And I feel like that's why people, like, I don't think it's hard for guys to commit. And I feel like a guy that can't, uh, how do you say, like, it's 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 concerning when a guy cannot commit. It's concerning when a guy cannot, like, do what he says and say what he does. You know what I'm saying? Like, because yeah. at that point, you're a liability to me. Like, in the shit I got going on and the shit that I do, like, I can't be with nobody that's out here in these streets like that. Like, it's fine. That's cute and all. But, like. I'm a little popular, you fucking with somebody else. If they got some shit going on, like, if something happens, like, motherfuckers gonna choose sides. Now I'm into it with all these people. They ain't, like, it's just too much. Yeah. I don't have time for that. I got shit to lose for real. Like, I only like to fuck with people that have shit to lose. I do not want to be around people that's gonna put you in those situations. Like, you're a liability. If you cannot commit, and then you gotta think, like, a lot of these niggas that can't commit, like, I feel like, business wise what are you doing like you're not reliable you're like it's just like little things like in my head like it just branch off into everything else i'm like this nigga can't be running business right like when you think of like some of these people that open businesses like you you open this restaurant you giving all the hoes free food that's why we ain't making no money you right. get what i'm saying like it's learning they face yeah. giving free food trying you can get some pussy right all. like i'm wondering why our business is failing <laughs> <laughs> this nigga gave everything away like trying to be <laughs> right. in those face it's like it's just like when i think of like men and being able to commit it just branch off into a lot of other things because like if you can't commit in a relationship that you're saying that you're committed into like whatever sometimes shit happens i don't know i don't cheat i've never cheated but like if you're saying like i'm committed to you i love you we're together and then you go off somewhere and you cheating on somebody you lying you hiding shit you are a liability because nothing good comes from like a motherfucker that's hiding their hand and doing all this extra shit in no area of their life. Cause like then you get used to being a bullshitter. I can't di- like like I said, it just branch off to everything to me. Yeah. Like what else you lying about? What else you can't commit to? Yeah, it's weird. Yeah, so. and there's a lot of times like you know a lot of people just like you said make it hard for the trust. That's trust. You can't trust somebody if you can't commit with somebody and make like okay, you know, I'm giving you these chances. Like mm-hmm. you fuck up here and maybe thinking like what you gonna fuck up on next. Yeah. You can't handle this small stuff. It's very deep. It's very deep. And I like how you brought up cheating, but I'm not gonna talk about that now. <laughs> Cause I, I wanna bring you on for another episode. We're gonna talk about I'm with it. I'm a with lot it. of stuff. Like a lot of different stuff. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I got so I got some interesting you, insights. You do. <laughs> you do. And um with, speaking of that, interest yeah. insights and stuff, you got a podcast yourself. I do, I do. I yeah. haven't recorded it in like a year now. But like I'm so sad about it. It's maybe it's me podcast. But I've been back and forth. I was moving and all this stuff was happening in my life, so I did put it on hold, but I do love podcasts podcast and I love interviewing I love having these conversations because like like we just sat here and talked about so many dope things and just vibed out I love it and it's like you know it's like the camera not even here yeah you just chop it up and that's the best thing about podcasts is really chopping it up with somebody and just chopping it up about things you usually chop it up with with, like like you're a a dinner you're a function or whatever you just chop it up with the homie and that's why I like that I created this podcast because you know I met so many dope people doing this podcast, you know, dope people like yourself and other artists and all kind of different people from different walks of life. It's like God just gave me the opportunity to meet these people and meet y'all and stuff like that and then build new relationships and connections with other people Mm -hmm. that can lead to other things. And then, like, I feel like you have something to give the world, too. You know what I'm saying? Like, in these conversations, like, you give something to the viewer. Like, people that are watching it, they learn something. They, they, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like with within, like, podcasting and within those conversations, so much comes from it. So, I love Mm -hmm. what you got going on here. Like, it's definitely dope. Thank you, because mm-hmm. you did, I'm surprised, I'm, I'm happy you came here, because you didn't even have to come here. At first, I thought, like, maybe she ain't going to respond, she don't know, but, <laughs> but she did, she so love, and yeah. that shows y'all, like. Because I've been seeing your work, I've been seeing you move and work, and I'm like, okay, like, I like yeah. what you're doing, and like, like I said, like, it's a vibe, for sure. Yeah, thank you, like, mm. it's all about consistency. Um, for sure. I, I'm going to bring up another more, another, more, another question yeah. before we leave about here. Um because we was talking about, like, the girls with the BBLs, mm-hmm. and you wouldn't believe how some of them is, and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And the amount of confidence that you have about mm-hmm. yourself and how you carry yourself, do you have any insecurities? 
Because I, I let, me, let me bring this up because I, I'm just like, you know, y'all might be tired of me saying this mm-hmm. or y'all might call me crazy, but it was just like, I'm just realizing that everybody has insecurities because yes. I never thought like, I'd be looking like, you got insecurities here, right? You <laughs> popping, you pretty, you this and that. Yeah. Or I look smart, you got the money, you got the bag, what you exactly. got? Exactly, like, what you tripping on? So mm-hmm. it's like, I don't know if you want to open up about it, but yeah. if you do, you want to share it. Because somebody out here probably looking and want to know, like, what is your insecurities? My insecurity. Look, I do have insecurities. Like you said, like, it's it's hard to wrap people's heads around it because, like, everybody got their thing. Like, literally. That's why I said, like, you can't let, like, social media or nothing else, like, tell you that anybody has a perfect life. Because anybody that's saying my life mm-hmm. is completely per- perfect, they, lying. they just lying or being, like, positive about it, which kudos to you. Be positive about this shit because I go through shit every motherfucking day and I'll be like, I love it here. Wouldn't <laughs> trade it for the world, but mm. but I definitely have insecurities. And mine is my forehead like is big. Like I give Rihanna a run for her motherfucking money. Like But the, you know, big, big foreheads, <laughs> pretty girls with the big foreheads, ain't nothing wrong with that. But like, you know hmm. like everybody be saying that they be like it ain't even that big. I'm like yeah. You know, dudes don't be like, oh, she got a big ass for you. Right. I'm about to stay here. <laughs> so we can't hear about that. <laughs> oh, oh, man. But, really? but, you know, that's 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 what's up. Like, they hear that other people that people might look up to are just like, oh, she better than me or they better yeah. than me. To hear that they they just like you. They yeah, got insecurity they just, like, just you. like you. And that's what, honestly, like, the confidence comes from knowing, like, everybody is human. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That's what I'm saying. Like, no matter where you are or who you are, like, when girls go, oh, you, you so pretty or you, you are too. Like, I don't give a fuck what you look like, what you got on. What, like, I don't give a fuck if, like, technically everybody in this world call you fucking ugly. Like, you deserve to feel like you are not. You deserve to feel like you're that bitch. I don't give a fuck who you are. That's like, a fact. You know what I'm saying? Like, especially if your energy good and shit, like, there's no reason you shouldn't feel like look in the mirror every morning and be like, that's that bitch. Right. You know what I'm saying? And we got to take in consideration, like, stop talking about yourself. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Because I used to be like, I don't like that. I look, I say something about myself, but it's like, bro, stop talking about Man. yourself. You know what I'm saying? If you don't like it, fix it. Exactly. But if, you, but if why you got it, embrace it. It is what it is. Mm-hmm. It's like, you know what I'm saying? You know who you is. You a cool ass person. You, you're on the room. You, everybody gravitate to you. You got swag. You got this and that. You know how to talk. And everybody know you're a genuine person. That's what matters the most. Like, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Physical appearances and whatever you got going on can change. Yeah. But that heart, bro, like, you know, you can't come exactly. around people. People go always remember that, like, how you treated them, what's mm-hmm. your heart like. Yep. You know what I'm saying? That's what the rest of what really matters at the end of the day. For real. So yeah, like that's crazy. Like I said, like, I'm I'm just I'm just appreciative of uh, you coming up here, of course, and just chopping it up, man. It's like because I've been seeing you, like you know, <laughs> you like the little Milwaukee celebrity to me. Like yeah, okay, <laughs> maybe Shannon come up on yeah, the show, yeah. and I've been seeing you. Like I love what you're doing too. Yeah. Like you just living your life, see, just man. seeing you happy, regardless if it's Facebook or social media or not. Mm-hmm. It's just like, and just from hearing you and just being around you now, it's just like your vibe is everything. And I, I, I like the, you're welcome. I like to just point that out and let people know that who yeah. I really feel like got a good vibe about yeah. themselves. Like, that mean a lot because they kind of make me happy now. Like, vibes go off of other, other people's of vibes. Of course. That's why you know even saying? when you said, like, stop saying mean shit to yourself, you always going to be your harshest critic. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got to live with yourself every motherfucking day of your life. The world is mean, so be nice to yourself. Exactly. You know be nice to yourself. And like, plus, don't nobody want to be around somebody just talk about themselves all the time. Yeah. Be, you know, own your shit. You know what I'm saying? You right. is, you is. You get, put that shit on. And walk out here like you you the biggest shit in the world. Right, you know what I'm saying? Literally. That's all at the end of the day. Cause you gotta be yo, 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 yo. You're gonna be your world's the world's you're gonna be your own worst critic and you're gonna be yep. your best cheerleader. No, for so real. So it is what it is. That's like a fact. if you don't like it, fix it. You know what I'm saying? But in the meantime, own it and do what you do and live life every day. Cause we blessed to be here and put a smile on your face because you got another twenty four hours and make some shape. Period. So you know what I'm saying? <laughs> And um, I just want to thank you for coming up here. You know of what I'm saying? Of course, anytime. And like you yeah. said, there will be a part two. It will be a part two. And yeah. we'll have some more conversation. Yeah, because <laughs> I see what you're doing. I, I checked out your podcast. I'm like, that's dope. I like Man, what you're doing. Thank you. You're welcome. I like what you're doing. I like the quality of it. I like how it was, how it was your energy. And just, mm-hmm. it fits you. This thank is for you. you. Like yeah. a lot of people be like, this for you, bro. And I was like, oh, what? <laughs> Yeah, it is. It is. And like I said, like just like having these conversations and like sharing this energy, like people are watching that and they gaining from it. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like every time you sit down and watch a podcast, like you soaking in something, you learning something or you wouldn't be watching it. Yeah. So. So and I'm just appreciative to all the fans and the followers and supporters and subscribers. 
Because I had people hit me like, bro, this is a good podcast. This is the best podcast I've seen. Or it's like, how can I get on the show? Or is it on iTunes? It's like, that all means a lot to Hell me. Yeah. Like, And like you damn. said, consistency. Like, I, I told you, like, I see you around. I see you posting. I see you working. Like, I love consistency. I love a person that put themselves out here. Because people don't understand that it's kind of hard. Like, it's not just like, I just showed up and turned the camera on. Like, you really got to build up that confidence. You got to come up with these topics. You got to edit. You got to record. You got the mics. <laughs> it ain't like a motherfucker got a million dollar team behind mm-hmm. them. So, like, you really have to make that time out of your day. So, like, I thank you for having me here. Yeah, for sure. That's, yeah. for, that's for sure. I appreciate you for coming. Um, and you right about that. You got to build the confidence because I ain't never seen myself doing no podcast. Yeah. I'm like, oh, no. Nah. <laughs> but then shout out to my girl, Mama Cita. She a rapper. Yeah. And she was like, you got to put yourself on the camera that you right do do the podcast so people can see you and feel comfortable exactly. about coming up here and interviewing them yeah and ever since then i took it and ran with it even my you know it just meant a lot you know what i'm saying is to see people really messing with me and like coming up here and just sharing y'all's story and stuff like that yeah. and, and inspiring other people and like i said congratulations to you and your success and you Thank moving you. from milwaukee yeah. to las vegas by yourself man by herself <laughs> like you know what i'm saying i'm not knocking nobody for leaving with anybody but yeah. just leaving home period we already know how hard that can be just it's leaving yeah. and like getting homesick just starting all over you know what man. i'm saying it take a lot another yeah. thing confidence like you just gotta believe in yourself and just remember if you don't if you don't do it it might not get done you yeah, know what I'm exactly, saying exactly so. exactly but 100. you know I wanna thank you for giving not only me but other people all my followers and watchers yeah. uh, inspiration of course inspiration. anytime y'all need inspiration <laughs> yeah inspiration and just like peace and just a good conversation just chopping it up with me and just yeah. you know just, just, just spreading your love and bringing your vibe on this podcast that's what it's all about and um, like I said, I, I want to wish you good luck on your journey. Thank you. You're welcome. And thank you for coming here. And, um, you know, just let us know what's next, what you got coming next. Man, so next up, honestly, I want to buy property in Nevada. Mm-hmm. Like, I really want to buy property in Nevada, whether I rent it out or Airbnb it or something. But right now, the interest rates are insanely through the roof. So I'm, I'm just, you know, sitting, waiting, observing, mm-hmm. seeing, like, like learning the areas and spaces out there. I started doing, like, I was doing makeup in Milwaukee, and, like, I want to start doing makeup in Vegas. There's always something going on, so there's obviously, mm-hmm. like, a market for it. So I want to start back doing that in Vegas. Like, it seems like a lot of fun there. So yeah. I think that's what I want to do. Maybe open me a little salon or something, do something cute out there. But, yeah. like, I never... I didn't, when I moved there, I wasn't like, this is going to be my forever home, but I do want to establish something here. So I'm working on establishing stuff in Nevada just because I know it's growing so rapidly. Like before, like it really was like not a lot of people living there, but people are like moving, especially from California to Vegas. So it's (laughs) growing and it's growing quick. So I'm just trying to, you know, I'm playing chess, not checkers. There you go. You know, you got to make your next move, your best move and always be patient and let God show you what to do next and let him like lead you in that direction. Of course. But you definitely on the right track, you know what I'm saying? You didn't let nothing stop you. You left, you 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 went out on faith, yeah. ambition, mm-hmm. and just, just hit the ground running. Mm-hmm. And like just knowing the type of person you is and seeing your vibe, you can make it anywhere, Sam. <laughs> and you. I'm not just saying that I can, I can you have that swagger, that confidence and that yeah. you know, just that vibe about yourself. You know how to handle yourself, you know how to talk to people, you know how to, you're a hustler, you got that Man, ambition. That's that Milwaukee and, shit, I ain't gonna lie. Like, yeah, yeah. People people sleep on Milwaukee, but we're some fact. fucking hustlers. Like that's one thing we gonna do, we ain't no lazy ass motherfuckers. We might be up to something here and there, but yeah. we ain't that lazy. Like we get to it, we figure yeah. it the fuck out. So when we get somewhere else, uh, we, like people say, if you can make it in New York, you can make it anywhere. If you can make it in Milwaukee, Milwaukee. Yeah. What? You can make it anywhere. Man. You can make it anywhere. That's a fact. But, you know, shout out to all the subscribers and the fans out here. Anybody want to come on this platform, just hit me, DM me. Artists who want to come up here, showcase your talent and freestyle, hit me. Wherever you rap, you sing, you do poetry, whatever. Just come up here and hit me. You know what I'm saying? People got a business, you want to promote it, hit me and we can talk about it. And um, I want to thank my guests for maybe Shannon for stopping through by, stopping through and chopping it up with me. You know what I'm saying? Y'all make sure y'all follow her. Make sure, um, let them know where they can follow you. Make sure y'all follow me. Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, uh, TikTok, YouTube. I'm maybe Shannon across the board. So make sure y'all follow me and shout out to you. Yeah, like literally, you. like I had such a good time. So if y'all interested in coming on the podcast, y'all want to pop y'all shit, y'all want to have a good conversation, y'all want the vibes, y'all want the quality. Yeah. 
shout out to him yeah. okay like make sure y'all pull up make sure y'all hit him up. up make sure y'all show some love like subscribe do what y'all gotta do boost him mm-hmm. up like yeah. like i said if you can make it in Milwaukee, you can make it anywhere and yes. it takes so much to do this shit by like yourself and really like get yourself out there like you got the whole setup you yep. know what i'm saying like yep. that shit's not and cheap. it's just gonna get better you and know it's gonna saying? get better like it's not cheap like you invested in yourself you got the whole setup you got the confidence you're definitely doing your thing so shout oh, out to thank you thank you i thank you so much yeah, thank you of course thank you and um y'all make sure y'all follow her y'all heard what she said y'all follow me and boost me up and keep supporting you know what i'm saying i appreciate all the organic followers and subscribers it mean a lot to me and um it don't go unappreciated mm-hmm. but y'all make sure y'all check out maybe shannon y'all follow her and y'all follow both of us and y'all just stay positive and spread peace and love you know what i'm saying and we appreciate y'all for you know tuning in man rick taylor maybe shannon we out